Okay, the principle of supervision states that when two waves meet, the total displacement at a point is equal to the sum of the individual displacements at that point. What do I mean by this? For example, these two waves are positive displacements. They're actually pulses. And when they meet, they're going to add up. The positive and the positive displacements add up to give an even bigger displacement. These two waves have one as a positive and another one has a negative displacement. And when they meet, they actually cancel out because they add together and there's a point that's going to actually equal zero. So you can see there, it cancelled out and it gave zero. Okay, when two waves meet like this, you can see they're in phase, they add up to give a bigger resultant wave. This is called constructive interference. So what's going on here? So normally this happens, for example, when there's a part difference of a whole number of wavelengths or an integer number of wavelengths. For example, zero, uh, one lambda, two lambda, three lambda. Because this will lead to a phase difference of 360 or a multiple of 360 or 2 pi or a multiple of 2 pi. So for example, 360, 720, they're all in phase or 0, 2 pi, 4 pi and so on. So when these two identical waves meet in phase, by identical I mean they have the same wavelength, same frequency and amplitude, they're going to superpose and the superposition leads to constructive interference and that is going to lead to a maximum. For example, if this was sound, we'd hear a very loud sound because they're adding together to make a louder sound. Okay, when waves meet like this, we say they're in antiphase. They're going to superpose and cancel out completely like this. So this is called destructive interference. And this normally happens when the part difference is an odd multiple of half a wavelength. For example, half a wavelength or 1.5, 2.5 and so on. This leads to a phase difference of an odd multiple of 180 degrees or an odd multiple of pi. For example, 180, 540, or pi, 3 pi, uh, 5 pi. So they're all basically meeting in antiphase. And they're identical again, meaning that they're same wavelength and same frequency. So when they meet and they superpose, they cancel out, giving destructive interference, and a minima is formed. So for example, if this was light, and these two way light waves were meeting in antiphase, then they would cancel out and you would see nothing. You would see darkness. Okay, we've got two identical waves here, both with a wavelength of 4 meters. Leave point A and point B in phase. When they meet at point X, the wave from A has traveled 12 meters and the wave from B has traveled 18 meters. Explain the observation at X. Okay, so firstly, we need to figure out the phase difference at X. So for, for the phase difference, we're going to need the path difference. So you can see here the path difference is going to just be 18 minus 12. So the wave from um, B to X has traveled an extra 6 meters compared to the wave from A. And we can figure out what, f what how much wavelengths go inside this. So if we divide this by the wavelength 4, we see that it's 1.5 wavelengths. So it's traveled 1.5 wavelengths extra. So straight away from this, I know it's going to be destructive interference because of that half a wavelength. But just to figure out the phase difference, we see it's uh, 3 pi, which is the same as pi, because you can deduct as many 2 pi as you like, and that's antiphase. Okay, so they're going to superpose at x, they're going to be an antiphase, so it's going to lead to destructive interference, and at x, the observation will be, be a minimum. So if this was sound, you'd hear nothing. If this was light, you'd see nothing. Okay, in this question, you have two loudspeakers connected to the same computer emitting sound waves of a single tone, meaning the same frequency, and they're emitting it in phase. Okay, so a girl is standing at point A and hears a loud sound and as she walks along the line X, Y, the sound becomes quiet at point B, loud again at point C, and then quiet again at point D. Explain why. So, okay, so well, firstly, the, the sound from the two speakers are going to spread out and they're going to meet at different points. Okay, so when they do meet, they're going to superpose. So at point A, they both travel the same distance. So the part difference is zero. So they're because they left in phase, they're going to arrive in phase and they're going to construct constructively interfere to produce a maximum. That's why she hears a loud sound. But when she walks over to B, well, we know it's a minimum there. So it must mean that it's destructive interference. So what's going on there? Well, the sound from uh, speaker B has traveled an extra distance. And compared to the, the distance traveled by loudspeaker 1, um, it's going to have to be half a wavelength extra because that leads to a phase difference of pi which is an antiphase, and that's going to cause destructive interference. So she has a minimum there. And then as she walks to C, well, now, again, she has a maximum. Okay, so that's because, again, the path dif difference has now gone to uh, a whole number of wavelengths, which means that the phase difference is 2 pi. And so, again, they're in phase. So constructive interference occurs. They're adding up to make a louder sound. And then at point, point D here, 
Well, again, now the part difference has increased even more to the point where it's one and a half wavelengths. One and a half wavelengths means its phase difference is three pi, which is the same as pi. It's an antiphase, and that means that a destructive interface occurs, and she has a minimum there.